My name is Dr. Michael Brown, and this is Three Words, a bite-sized podcast about the simple and yet very strategic choices that all of us can make in order to be fully alive. And we can't be fully alive unless we are completely honest with ourselves, with others, and with God. We had a great conversation today in the podcast studio with my dear friend, Coach Tom Nairn, who kind of unpacks for us what it means to live out these three words. Be completely honest. You are not going to want to miss this episode. Listen in. Coach Tom Nairn here in the studio with DMB. I'm so excited to have you here. We've known each other now for probably almost six months, but we had almost immediate connection and we yes. become great friends. But you are first time guest here in Three Words Podcast Studio. And on this episode, we are excited to have you, but no one knows who you are. So would you take just a few minutes and tell our viewers and our listeners, who is Coach Tom? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, man. It's great to be here with you. My real name is Lou Rawls, but Tum Tum is my nickname. Got that nickname from my mom when I was a kid. Um, I'm from the Bahamas. I was I was born in the Bahamas, Nassau, Bahamas. Moved to America when I was 13 years old by myself. You can imagine how scared I was doing that. First time I'd ever got on the airplane before and first time being away from my family. But I moved to Florida because I got a basketball scholarship. Um, was there from 13 to 16 years old. Moved back to the Bahamas at uh, for five months and then went to high school in Wichita, Kansas. After high school in Wichita, Kansas, went on to play basketball at Michigan State University. After Michigan State University, instead of going to play professional basketball, I went to work for the Phoenix Suns in a player development role. After doing the Phoenix Suns job, I actually went back to Michigan State to get my master's, um, work as a graduate assistant on the basketball team for two seasons. And after that, I went back to my high school as the head coach for the post-grad team at Sunrise Christian Academy. After that, went to Southern Utah University as an assistant coach. And now I'm here at Bowling Green as an assistant coach. So Bowling Green State University as yeah. assistant coach, what I think is going to be one of the most amazing programs in the history of our university. As I've gotten to know you, the head coach, obviously as the life and mental coach for BGSU Athletics. Yeah. That's how we connected initially. And yeah. I would say on average, I'm with the team maybe three, four, five times a week, yes. stopping into practices. I'm so excited to be working with you and your team this year. But man, we could do an entire episode just studying your history and your journeys yes. and bouncing from here and there and everywhere. But I'm guessing in many ways who you are and where you've been and where you've traveled and all of your experiences are going to feed into this conversation today around yes. these three words. Be completely honest. Um, these three words mean a lot to me. And I think the older I get, they mean more to me. You know, I think sometimes in life, people don't want to be honest because they're afraid of what it would do to them or, or to other people. And as I, as I continue to grow as a person, I'm seeing the necessity of being honest in all facets of life. And it's something that has helped me and, and continues to help me. And I think people need to understand that they can be completely honest with themselves and with other people. And, and I, you know, I've had uh, uh, times in my life where I just wasn't completely honest. And so now as I continue to grow, I just want to always be completely honest because I think honesty is the door that you have to go through in order to get healing from mm -hmm. certain things that may have happened in your life. Think you might not like the way things have went, but if you're not honest, you can't really begin the process of healing. So I'm guessing for some people who have tuned into this episode, they saw the title be completely honest. And immediately they were both intrigued, yeah. but also terrified yeah. because true transparency is the most terrifying and terrific um, choice that you can make in your life. Yes. I mean, you would probably agree with that because obviously you've chosen these three words. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's terrifying, yes. but also from what you just said, there's a lot to unpack here, Tom, around this idea of transparency and honesty and vulnerability. Um, and at the root of it is humility, that you don't have to be perfect, yeah. that you don't have to be all that, that you can actually be just who you are and be honest about how you're feeling, yeah. who you are, your identity, yep. um, your interactions are authentic and real. Let's just kind of look at each of these different pieces. So let's talk about honesty with yourself. What does that look like for you, Tom? Well, just, I think it's first of all, being emotionally honest. You know what I mean? Sometimes- okay. People think being emotionally honest just because, you, you know, you don't have to make emotional decisions just because you're emotionally honest. Those are two different things. I think sometimes we, we go on the other spectrum of just being, you know, making emotional decisions. But I can be I can say how I really feel to myself 
and not be emotional in my decision making process. So, you know, you you just uh, it's called really self assessment. You know, you have to be be truthful with yourself. And then I think once you're truthful with yourself about how you feel about whatever the case may be, then you can then be truthful with other people and completely honest with other people. Has that been hard for you to be truthful with yourself, to be honest with yourself? Because I know this whole art of self-reflection and self-assessment and being able to look in the mirror and actually be able to know yourself. For most people, they would say that is really hard. It's confusing, but also it's scary, which is why we hate silence. You know, we don't like to sit alone in our own thoughts. We put in the AirPods and we just scroll or we whatever, because then we actually have to come face to face with how we're really feeling yeah. and who we really are, that yeah. self-honesty that as you just described it, I'm guessing for many of our listeners and viewers are like, I don't know how to do that. But yeah. even if I do know how to do that, it seems scary to me. Yeah. Have well, you experienced that yourself in your own life? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think like, first off, you gotta, you gotta sift through your emotions. Like, how does this really make me feel? Mm-hmm. Right. And I think sometimes when you, when you think through those emotions, then you could kind of, you know, tell a friend, and bounce it off of them like, you know, we had a certain space in our relationship and I, I need to be completely honest with you. Like, this is how I feel about this that happened in my life. And so I share a personal story with you. Please. Um, some years ago, we, you know, I told you I went to work for the Phoenix Suns, but I, you know, I signed with an agent to go pursue my professional career. But the Phoenix Suns came along and, and you know, I figured, you know, I'd take this job to go work in the NBA I was 23 years old and I just felt like, you know, a lot of people would say this guy is crazy for turning down an NBA job at 23. But when I went to, to Phoenix, it wasn't like things weren't, were, were really bad there. Like I just, I just didn't have the best time. I didn't really give it my all like I, I do when I really care about something because in my heart, I knew, you know what? I should have went and pursued my professional career. I mean, I left the Bahamas at 13 to play basketball, to be a professional basketball player one day. And then I have the chance and opportunity to do it. And then I don't, and I don't do it, but I didn't know how to say that. Mm -hmm. And so people would be like, well, tell me not playing anymore. You you know, you went straight into coaching. And I'd just be like, well, you know, God got a plan for everybody. And although he does, I wasn't being completely honest about how I felt about going to Phoenix. That comment was almost a wall just yes. to, to kind of say, just uh, uh, generically, I'll throw this out here yes. and then you'll accept it and we don't have to talk about how I'm really feeling. Yes. Yes. And so. And what did that do to you inside as you weren't being completely honest with people? Man, you know, I started to just keep saying the same thing. You know, God, I got a plan for everybody. But then uh, COVID hit. Once COVID hit, COVID hit maybe right after my first season as a graduate assistant at Michigan State. So I had a lot of time with myself. I was mm-hmm. staying, me, me and my best friend was staying together at the time. And I was just thinking like, man, like, I think I want to go play. I got already spent a year with the Suns. And now I spent the season with Michigan State. And I'm like, well, the season got cut short. Um, and I'm like, you know what? I think, like, I think I want to go and play again. And I was just kind of sifting through the emotions mm-hmm. of not pursuing my professional career. But I, I really didn't know how to say that out of my mouth. I would think it all the time in my head. And so true story, um, my stomach started growling like really loud. It wouldn't give me any like pain, but it would just growl all the time. And I couldn't figure out why my stomach was growling like that. And so I told my best friend and I told the team, the team, the, the trainer or doctor, one of them, and they gave me, they told me to take some pills that would help with it. And I took the pills and it didn't help. So my stomach would keep growling. So we couldn't really go to people's houses at the time. And so I would Zoom with my with my pastors. And the only person, the only two people knew about my stomach was the trainer and my best friend. Nobody else knew my stomach was growling like that. And at the end of the Zoom call with my pastors, my pastors, they always pray when we get off the phone. And my pastor said, Tom, look at me. And so I looked at him and he begins to pray for me. And he said, I I come against growling in your stomach. That is regret bubbling up on the inside of you. And I was like, wow, I I have to let this go. Mm -hmm. And so once that happened, like I was holding on to not going to pursue my professional career for so long that it started to affect my body physically. And so once I realized that I regretted it so bad, I just had to release it. And I had to say things like, man, like my life looks nothing like I thought it would look like. 
And my life wasn't bad. It just wouldn't, what, you know, I didn't think it would be what it was at the time. Mm. And so once I realized that, I was able to let go and say, you know what? I wish I would have went to play instead of going to Phoenix. I regretted it, but I didn't know how to be completely honest about it. I presume this is the perfect moment just to pause our episode and my conversation with Tom to simply say to you, this is real and this is a deep conversation. And would you be willing to share this episode with a friend? Now back to our conversation. And in many ways, it came back around because just recently <clears throat> you were in the Bahamas playing for the national team. Yeah. Can, can you, can you share that story real quick? Like yeah. this, you went from coaching at Bowling Green State University, <laughs> taking a little break, yeah. a little break from coaching at BGSU to tell us. Yeah. So I've been playing with the Bahamian national team since I was 17. Um, and now we were in a pre-Olympic qualifying tournament in Argentina and it was amazing. Probably one of the my best experiences, you know, in, with the with the game of basketball. Because like two months ago. Like two months ago. Like maybe three weeks ago. Now I just got back three weeks ago. But we played Argentina. We, we played Argentina twice, Cuba. And Argentina was the number four team in the world. And we beat them twice in Argentina to qualify for the pre, uh, Olympic qualifier next year. So let me get this right. So you, when you said beat them, you as the starting point guard. Yes, Actually, we're, we're, you know, you're an old guy now and you're yeah. still, you still got it. You still got it, right? Yes. I was the starting point guard on that team. We had, mm. we had probably the best team we've ever assembled. You know, a lot of our, a lot of our pros played and a lot of our NBA players, guys like Buddy Hill, DeAndre Aiden, Eric Gordon, and then everybody on our team in their professional career, some of my high school teammates on the team, Travis Munnins, Shad, all, all those guys. It, it was, it was fun. Love the story. But it came back that. around. You got to play. You got yes. to actually do some of the things that you've been dreaming about. Yeah said no to, but then it comes back around in, to quote you, in God's plan. But you actually made a very interesting comment how dishonesty with yourself mm. has physiological ramifications. Yeah. That that not being fully honest with your emotions can actually bring about physical sickness is yeah. what you were kind of experiencing, that there's actually physical symptoms that happen as a result of wearing masks, yes. not being real, not being transparent and being true to yourself. Yes. So talk more about interactions with people. Because obviously you're trying you're talking about being honest with yourself, but now you're yep. talking about being honest with people. Yes. I'm guessing that's hard. We actually uh t recorded another episode tonight around dating and just idea mm. of honesty and so yeah. forth. It's it's hard to be honest in today's culture. We're always spinning, we're always pretending, we're always doing different things that keep the protective shield up between me and other people. Yeah. I would think honesty breaks it all down. It does. Well, you know, like like we've been saying, primarily you need to be honest with yourself. And then it's more easier, I think, to be mm -hmm. honest with other people. But I think a lot of people are not honest with other people because because of fear, right? They're afraid. If I tell you how I really feel, right, um, there's going to be love withdrawal. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And so I've learned in my life that you have to get, like, honesty with other people it really helps you to see where the relationship really is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like some, I'm not going to tell you how I really feel. So I don't really know where this relationship is really at. Once I tell you how I feel about something you did, something you might've said to me, then I get to really see what, what, what our relationship means to you based upon your response to me. And so a lot of times people don't say how they really feel because they think if I say that to that person, then they might never talk to me again. And I, I, I just don't know you want to be in relationships like that. Well, yeah. And so you choose a shallow relationship yeah. over a relationship of substance yes. because it feels safer, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't have to be fully me, but then we feel isolated in the relationship because I'm not fully known. Yeah. And you can't be in a deep relationship unless you are fully known That's good. and unconditionally loved mm -hmm. at the same time. If one of those two ingredients are missing, wow. yeah. you are not going to be able to have a deep connection. Yeah. What you're focusing on in our conversation today is not the unconditional love piece. Right. It is the fully known piece. Yeah. And if you are fully known and unconditionally loved, yeah. it's going to feel like a deep connection. Yeah. But imagine a scenario, if I can do the contrary to what you're talking about, if I'm unconditionally loved, but not fully known, not fully honest, not fully transparent, Yeah. then it's going to feel really shallow and it's going to feel surfacy and it's not going to satisfy the deepest hunger in our soul for deep, meaningful human connection. Yeah. 
Now you talked about obviously your pastors. You talked about uh, a little bit. You hinted to this idea of faith, and and I know you as a man of faith. And, yeah. and people have told me you got to go online and listen to Tom. He's given some great <laughs> sermons, and I just love all of that. Yeah. But let's kind of wrap up our conversation with that because obviously we talk about the twelve dimensions of a person's life here in Three Words Podcast DMV yeah. Coaching. One of those is a spiritual dimension. I'm wondering what it looks like for you, or even how you frame this conversation in the context of being honest with God. Yeah, man, that that's such a that's such a powerful question. You know, that's such a powerful question. Has I that think, come to you easy? Has that been challenging for you to be honest with God? Well, the situation about basketball was when when I really learned that God could handle my honesty. Mm. I didn't think he could handle it. I couldn't think I didn't think he could handle me telling him how I really felt about my life and what I felt about not going to play. I didn't think so. And that's why I held on to it. One, I didn't know if other people could handle it. I didn't know if I could handle it. I didn't know if he could handle it. So when I when I learned that he can handle my honesty, I learned that through personal experience, it just it made it easier. But then, you know, I start to see it in the scriptures and and, and I'll close with this. You know, when when Jesus is in the toughest moment of his life, he's completely honest. Like I don't I don't feel like doing this. Hmm. I don't I don't I don't want to do this. Can I do this another way? That's emotional honesty. But his emotional honesty didn't mean he didn't want actually do what he came to do. And so I, I when I when I see that, it helps me, you know, to to be more honest with God. Because it's okay because he could handle it. He can handle it. Yeah. We actually did an episode uh, with one of our other pastors, Steve Risky, on doubt is okay. That yeah. God can handle our doubts, but he can also handle our honesty. And you've hinted to this throughout our very brief conversation as we wrap up, but that honesty is the pathway mm. to healing, yeah. to freedom, yes. to deeper human connection. And even what you described just now as a more vibrant, real meaningful connection with the God of the universe. Man, Tom, yeah. <laughs> we're going to have you back in the studio again. It's I been great so. being with you yeah. today and I appreciate you taking the time and traveling all the way from the Bahamas <laughs> to be with us here in your zigzag across the world to yeah. be with us here in Bowling Green, Ohio. And I look forward to continuing to cultivate our friendship for the years to come. Thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate you. This conversation today was honest and it was deep and it was real. And we want to continue to engage in these conversations with you. If you want to continue to deepen your relationship with us, uh, those who are involved in this Three Words Podcast community, would you visit dmbcoaching.com slash subscribe and actually subscribe to our free newsletter. It comes up every four to six weeks and we provide new and fresh and free content for you to help these conversations go even deeper in your personal life, contextualized in your particular situation and in your life journey. It would be an honor to be more connected to you. So all that to say, we'll see you in a couple of weeks.